All right, in this session, we're going to talk about active yield calibration on the S series machines. First, to start off with some physical components, we have our pressure plates. We've got three of them here on our cross armor shields. Secondly, we have our moisture sensor up here, and our mass flow sensor is up in the grain tank there by the fountain auger. We want to make sure those are clean of debris because that will affect yield accuracy. The other thing that can affect yield accuracy is our setting and tension of this clean grain elevator chain. We want to make sure it is tight and we want to make sure that our paddles are not worn or rubbing against this housing in any way. Now we're going to go into how the active yield system actually works. The active yield is an active calibration that provides continuous calibration of the mass flow sensor through three load cells that are installed in the grain tank. The load cells in the grain tank estimate the change in the weight of grain as the grain tank fills, and then the AYM controller compares the grain tank load cell data to the clean grain elevator mass flow sensor data and adjust the mass flow sensor calibration curve in order to minimize the error. So your load cells are your constant and that compares the mass flow sensor data and changes it accordingly. Now you're not recording the load all the time. What an active yield load is, is it starts collecting that load around 2,000 pounds until around 6,600 pounds. So that load is actually only collecting over about 4,600 pounds. And that's from about the top of the cross auger shields to a little less than half of a bin full. And that load is going to be saved as long as the harvested crop is uniform uh, to support the constant flow during load collection and you have not encountered any um, slopes, roll or pitch that is greater than four degrees as well as there hasn't been any interruptions with grain flow during load collection. So how the system works is you need to have 15 loads acquired first before it will actually start to correct that calibration curve. Some best practices to achieve maximum accuracy with active yield systems is to avoid those flow interruptions when calibrating. Uh, to do that, you wanna start a long harvest run with an empty grain tank and you don't wanna load on the go during calibration. You don't want to stop to get out and check something. You don't want to uh, stop the separator. Um, you also want to reduce the flow variation. Uh, so you want to try to keep that consistent ground speed as well as that consistent cut width. So target those constant flow rate areas first, uh, such as a long harvest run. You also want to avoid the calibration timeout, uh, which is 400 seconds. So if the system doesn't achieve that 4,600 pounds in 400 seconds, it will reject that load. Uh, a couple way, one way to do that is to increase the ground speed and cut width to decrease time to collect the load. This can happen if we have uh, some really low yielding crops. Majority of the time, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, we also wanna increase opportunities to get samples accepted. So you want to unload the grain tank soon after sample has completed. Like I said, it completes at around 6,600 pounds. And so if you unload, make sure you unload below the cross augers and that way it will start collecting a load again. Uh, as well as terrain, uh, you wanna try to target any flat or near flat terrain available. Like I said, uh, a slope or positive or negative four degrees, if it encounters that, it will reject that load because that grain can shift in the tank. It is what them load cells are doing, they are modeling the grain in the tank 
And so if there's any shift, that's going to cause an inaccuracy. So that's why it rejects the load. A couple things that we need to make sure are done in order to maximize our accuracy is performing a mass flow vibration calibration with the header attached and the combine grain tank empty. We want to run that as if we were actually harvesting the crop. So header at uh, the cutting height, we want that at full throttle with the header and separator engaged. And then we also want to calibrate the moisture sensor temperature uh, to complete that and and then we want to calibrate the moisture sensor temperature so that it matches the outside ambient air temperature. There is some potential for loads to get rejected. If there is inconsistent flow, if there's been uneven loading or grain tank sample shift detected, um, if there's the pitch or roll too large of a slope, and like I said, that's four degrees, uh, which is a 7% grade. Uh, or the collection has been interrupted, such as uh, unloading on the go, disengaging separator, um, whatever it may be. In order to use the active yield system, we must first enable it. And that is done by going to the menu in the bottom right, and then going to Calibrations and Procedures. Before we enable it, we want to make sure our mass flow vibration calibration and the moisture sensor temperature have both been calibrated. Then we can touch active yield. We can turn it on. Then under the calibration, it's going to give us the crop type, the accepted samples, and when the last accepted sample was. Below that, it gives us the quality. We want to make sure that we achieve four bars because at that point the system is using five or more loads to apply to the calibration curve. Below that is the sample status, whether it says waiting for sample, collecting sample, or finished collecting sample. It will give you an update on how the active yield system is currently working. If we need to apply a correction offset to active yield, that is done by hitting the arrow with a dot above it here in our header. And then in the correction applied, we can put our percentage, which is calculated by comparing the combine load totals to a known true scale weight. If you feel like the active yield system is off on a field totals basis, we can put a yield offset correction in. We have to harvest at least 15 accepted active yield loads first before adjusting the correction. If we adjust it before, it's going to be constantly chasing the offset values and provide inconsistent field values. The way to make this correction is we want to harvest and scale check five full grain tank loads and compare the combined yield totals to scale weights for the five load totals. And then we can calculate the difference between actual combine weights and measured weights as a percentage. It's good to repeat this a few times to get an average of the whole system in order to put a correction in. If we're low on the yield, we need to put a positive offset in. If we are high, we need to put a negative offset in the system. A couple of tidbits on the active yield system is performing a manual yield calibration will not achieve faster active yield performance. Active yield still has to achieve its first 15 loads in order to start changing the calibration curve. In order to get there faster, it is recommended to unload as soon as the active yield load has been collected. And that can be found on the active yield status page. 
The other thing about active yield is it can be retrofitted on most S-series combines starting in 2012 and on up. If you have any questions about active yield, please contact your local landmark CTS to get answers.